of someone spent almost 40 years studying aluminum, has written over 200 scientific papers, and they had documentation showing major health concerns for you and your family. You'd be interested, right? Enter Christopher Exley, PhD, also known by his colleagues as Mr. Aluminum. He's read almost every paper published since 1980 written on aluminum. In his new book, Imagine You Are an Aluminum Atom, he shares profound insights to our health and the health of those we love. As a scientist, he studied more than 200 post-mortem brains in a variety of human conditions. A hundred of those were diagnosed with familial Alzheimer's and Alzheimer's of unspecified etiology. Dr. Exley found the brains of people diagnosed with Alzheimer's to contain aluminum far greater than the average brain, and those with familial Alzheimer's to have the highest levels. Next, he looked for the healthiest brains he could find. The Brain Bank in London supplied him with over 20 healthy post-mortem brains of people ages 65 to 105 who did not suffer from cognitive or neurologic impairment. He found that aluminum was not present. Based on that research, Dr. Exley emphatically believes that with no aluminum in the brain, there would be no Alzheimer's disease in the normal lifetime of an individual. That's a big statement and one worth pausing on. People without aluminum in their brains had normal brain function, whereas people with elevated levels of aluminum suffered from severe cognitive impairment, Alzheimer's. You would think that since it's the third most common element on the planet right behind oxygen and silicon, it would serve some, serve some biological function. Even though it's super reactive, both chemically and biologically, aluminum has no biologic function in the human body. Biologically active aluminum is only toxic. In fact, there's no historical evidence of aluminum being in any biologic tissue until we learn to mine it, smelt it, and use it. This began in 1889 when Charles Martin Hall invented a process of extracting aluminum metal from its ubiquitous ores of the Earth's crust. That was the start of what he calls the aluminum age. Since we've made aluminum so pervasive in our environment, aluminum is everywhere. Aluminum has become the most ubiquitous metal on the planet. Baking powder, deodorants, sunscreens, cookware, antacids, rocket fuel, pop cans, wire, in aluminum foil. Every piece of technology, from cell phones to automobiles, has aluminum in it. We could spend hours listing all the places we find aluminum. There is no such thing as healthy aluminum levels, yet according to Christopher Exley, it's in every cell in our body. One of the forms of Alzheimer's disease is called familial Alzheimer's, meaning that they appear to have a genetic predisposition and experience symptoms earlier in life. Professor Exley found the brains of people with familial Alzheimer's to have the greatest amount of aluminum in their brains. In other words, predisposition to Alzheimer's can be seen as a predisposition to aluminum accumulating in brain tissue. Knowing that earlier reports suggest that aluminum is present in autistic children and that it should only be present in older tissue, which has accumulated aluminum over a period of decades, Dr. Exley wanted to see if he could identify it in autistic brains. He contacted the UK Brain Bank for Autism and was given 10 brains to test. Five qualified for quantitative analysis where he could measure how much aluminum was present, but all 10 qualified for their imaging method of detected aluminum. When Dr. Exley's team had the opportunity to examine the first brain, that of a deceased 15-year-old, the team was stunned. They found that there was significantly more aluminum in the brain of the autistic child than that of an 85-year-old Alzheimer's patient. Quoting from the abstract, aluminum in brain tissue in autism. These are some of the highest values for aluminum in human brain tissue yet recorded. And one has to question why, for example, the aluminum content of the occipital load of a 15-year-old boy would be 8.74 micrograms per gram dry weight. You can see links to the right for the publication articles and a gripping interview on the High Wire with Del Bigtree. The High Wire interview is 90, 90 minutes, but the first 43 minutes will give you the big picture. The location of the aluminum was different in the autistic brains versus the Alzheimer's brains. The older Alzheimer or MS brains had aluminum entangled in dead neurons, often intertwined in phosphorylated tau proteins 
present as tangles and debris within the neurons. The autistic brain did not have aluminum in the neurons, rather it was in the housekeeping cells in the brain. It was intracellular in the microglial cells, the lymphocytes and macrophages that cross the blood-brain barrier found in both gray and white matter in the brain. As most of you know, aluminum salts are the adjuvant given in most vaccines as a way to stimulate the immune system to detect and negate whatever the vaccine is carrying. For example, the hepatitis B vaccine given on the first day of life contains 250 micrograms of aluminum. This is a huge subject and one that we'll come back to. But for now, be aware that aluminum is not your friend and begin studying how it gets into your body. Thanks for watching. I look forward to being with you again next Tuesday.